What's going on YouTube and welcome to episode one of the Evo X engine build tutorials. Now unfortunately I lost a bunch of footage somehow when recording, I believe it was just in episode one. So I'm gonna try my best to go through and record what I lost and I'm just kind of kind of explain to you guys what to do. I think I got most of the main parts down on video. I didn't lose that footage. I know I need to buy a new memory card. I need a, need a bigger memory card so I don't keep dropping footage like this. I just want to say guys, this is strictly for information purposes only. This is not going to be that entertaining to watch. So if you're here for entertainment, this is probably going to be the wrong video. Now the very first thing we are going to be doing, or what I did in the past, I lost the footage so I'm like, I can't show you guys. Grab your block, clean it immaculately, clean everything on it. I use brake cleaner, go to Napa, grab some brake cleaner. It seems like it's always on sale there for like three bucks a can. I picked up five cans and I picked up a few rolls of lint free towels. Go through your block, clean everything, clean all the oil gullies, clean where the bearings sit for the crank, clean your cylinder walls, clean everything. Spend a lot of time, get your block cleaned. You can never have your engine parts clean enough when you are building a new motor, especially dumping this kind of money into a motor. Do not cheap out and do not try to rush this, guys. The next step in this process is to completely clean up the crank. I'll be using the brake cleaner again on this with lint-free rags. Uh, I'm just gonna make sure, go through everything, all the oil holes and bearing surfaces and make sure everything is very clean. You do not want any dirt on this thing at all. Now I'm just gonna spray it down one more time with the brake cleaner and just let it air dry just to get anything I missed off. What we're gonna be using to measure all of the clearances on the crank and also rods is called Pasta Gauge. So how it works, guys, there's a little string of plastic, essentially, that is in this package, if I can get it out. And what you do is, I don't know if you guys can see this, it's a little, little tiny string, and you just simply place it on top of the crank here. And when you put the caps on and crank them down, you'll then remove the caps and measure the plastic gauge with this measuring tool here that's on the packaging. So it's a very simple and easy to use product, you know. I could go through and measure it with, with a bunch of tools and whatnot, but I am just doing it this way. So just put a little piece of the plastic or pasta gauge on all five. Okay, now that we got the plastic gauge on the crank, we can go ahead and slide these caps on, making sure we do not knock that plastic gauge off. Now it is time to install the ARP uh, main bearing bolts, or main cap bolts, crank bolts, whatever you wanna call them. And to get the proper torque spec, guys, you need to use this fastener lubricant that ARP gives you. You ain't gotta worry about buying it because they just throw it in the package. Just a little tiny smear on the threads and on the washer itself. And there's two different bolts. There's eight millimeter ones on the outside and 10 millimeter ones on the inside. I'm simply just gonna grab my 
quarter inch impact and lightly throw these in. Just to where they touch with no torque at all on these guys. So it is now time to torque all of the bolts. Uh, there's a, sp a specific order you tighten them in. I'll throw it here. Hopefully you guys can see that. Let me focus so you guys can. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then the outers. So to screenshot that guys if you need to. And another thing before we tighten these guys, make sure you don't do not move the crank at all when you have the plastic, plastic gauge in there uh, because it will destroy your readings. You're gonna have to redo everything. So, timing chain side. One, two. I'm just gonna lay this out on the table and so I can read it. And the torque sequence or specs, center ones go to 27 foot pounds to start. And now the outer ones go to 80 inch pounds, so I'm gonna have to grab my other torque wrench. Okay guys, now the final torque spec on these ARPs. The center ones, the 10 millimeter ones go to 70 foot pounds. So 10 millimeter ones, which are the center ones, go to 70. And the outer ones, which are eight millimeter, go to 32 foot pounds. And we're gonna do that in order. So 70 foot pounds on the torque wrench. Okay guys, we can now go ahead and back everything off. I'm gonna back them off in order. So guys, as soon as you pull these crank caps off, you grab your plastic gauge, the package, where it has all the measuring tools on it, and you measure the plastic gauge with that tool. The recommended range for the bearing clearances is 15 to 20 thousandths. All mine came through at 18 thousandths of an inch, so they are perfect, right in range. I'm not sure if this matters on this motor. I know Subaru specifically, uh, the bearing tangs all have to face a certain way. Uh, what we're doing here is the bearing tangs. So these tangs here, that's where the bearing tangs sit. I'm have, gonna have them all facing me just cause that's the way they came out. So flywheel sides here. Uh, so they're all gonna be facing me when the flywheel sides right here, the tang is here 
It probably doesn't matter. I know on Subarus, the OEM rods, you have to have them facing one way, but aftermarket rods, it does not matter. But, you know, I figured I might as well throw them in how the stock ones came out. So same process, guys. I'm not gonna really walk you through it. It's identical. Uh, wipe down the bearings, wipe down the rods, wipe down the crank, like we already did. And simply install the bearings with the plastic gauge. You might need to use a, just like a rubber mallet to pop these apart as they're pretty tight together. Just like so. And remember guys, every cap that comes off the rod has to go back on the same rod in the same way. And tang goes to tang on rods. Unfortunately, I lost pretty much all of the rod bearing uh, measuring footage. So what I did, I installed the rod bearings into the rods, used the plastic gauge on the rod to crank, measure the clearances. Now you want your rod bearing clearances to be 18 to 20 thousandths of an inch. Mine were right at 20 thousandths of an inch. So it's perfect. I'm running those how they are. Now guys, what you do if they're not within that range, you're gonna need to order oversized ACL bearings. I, I would recommend ACL bearings, that's what I've always ran. And you're gonna need to get your crank machine down to the proper spec. Okay guys, that is gonna wrap up all of the bearing clearances. That's one of the most important parts, is checking those and make sure, making sure they are well within the range, the specified range. Now we're gonna move on to the piston to cylinder wall clearance. This should already be done by the machine shop, just like all the bearing clearances. So checking it is just peace of mind, making sure they did a good job. So what I used is a set of their telescoping gauges. Let me pull them out here. So this one here, 54 to 88 millimeter. So it's a little gauge that we get. So how this works, it locks in like that. You compress it, put it down on the cylinder, and then when it's on the cylinder, you release it, lock it like that so it stays at the exact cylinder wall or the cylinder bore size, which mine were 86.5 millimeter. That's what they were bored to. Then you pull it out, measure it with a set of quality uh, caliper gauges, write that number down, and then you're gonna take your piston and measure it all this comes down to the manufacturer, but the CPs, the pistons I'm running, the pistons I am running are CPs. So they want you to measure half of an inch up from the bottom of the piston on the skirt, and you measure that with calipers. So you take that number and you subtract, you subtract it from the number or the size of the cylinder bore. So that's it, guys. You just take the cylinder wall size and then you me measure the piston skirt half of an inch up from the bottom and you subtract the piston size from the cylinder size. Simple as that. Now CP calls for 0 0.0035 inches. If they are not really, really close to that number, if they're like 20 thousandths of an inch, which is gonna be way too tight, you're probably gonna seize a piston. And honestly guys, it's better to have your pistons loose. It's gonna sound kind of crazy. It's better to have them loose on when you're building a motor than too tight because they expand. They are aluminum, they're gonna expand a lot more than your steel sleeves or your cylinder walls. So when they heat up, they're gonna expand, they're gonna seize to your cylinder. Now if they're too loose, but the only side effect is you're gonna hear the pistons, it's gonna be, you're gonna have piston slap. Now I heard a saying once guys about pistons, if they are too loose, only you will know. If they are too tight, everybody's gonna know because you're gonna blow your motor up. So. I, it's obviously best to have them right at the manufacturer's recommendation. Now 
Now it is time to move on to the piston ring and gap. So to measure this guys, take a piston ring end or a piston ring. You only need to do this with a compression ring. The oil rings you do not touch, you leave them as is. So piston ring, insert it into the cylinder, take your piston, flip it upside down so that the dome is facing down and push the piston ring down into the cylinder bore about an inch. Then you take feeler gauges and you measure the gap. So where the two ends touch, you're gonna measure the gap. The top piston ring, again, this all comes down to manufacturer recommendations and they will give you the spec sheet. For the top compression ring, I went 0.018 inches. For the bottom compression ring, the second ring, the black ring, I went with a 0.021. Now, you always want the bottom compression ring with a bigger gap than the top. The manu this has been discussed a lot online. I did a lot of research on it, but I obviously will always stick with the manufacturer's recommendations. One more thing, when you're filing these rings, you gotta make sure you do it squared. So when you close the gap, uh, both ends touch at the same time. I don't know if you guys can see that, but make sure you don't file this at an angle. You have to file it squared. And also top ring is the silver looking one. Middle ring is the black looking one. And I know this doesn't matter now when we're just filing, but the marking on the ring goes up. So there's an N on this ring. Sometimes it's a dot, sometimes it's an N, sometimes there's always some sort of marking on it and that goes to the top of the piston when we assemble. Once again guys, I am very sorry that that footage got destroyed. It just makes it a pain and not very clean looking, but I did the best I could. Hopefully it still helped you guys out quite a bit. As always, if you have any questions at all, drop a comment in the comment section below. That is gonna wrap up episode one, guys. I will have episode two, three, and four in the description box below. So feel free to go check those out. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like, a thumbs up, and subscribe if you like the content. Stay tuned for the next three episodes, guys. Catch you in the next one.